Hey, and welcome to this tutorial on the basics of Blueprint communication. This is a sort of beginner's guide to how Blueprints talk to each other and use the casting system. And we're going to learn this process by creating a connection between a button and a door so the player can walk up to the button and press it and it'll open the door. This is going to be the first part of the three-part series where we go through the basics of Blueprints, the more advanced communication methods like interfaces, and the last video will be more of the actual organization of Blueprints and how that can actually affect your performance both in-game and the editor. So yeah, with that said, let's get into this tutorial. Cool, so the first thing we actually need to do for this tutorial is add the starter content. If you haven't already got it, if you go up to add and import and click add feature or content pack, you click this and you go along to content packs and click on starter content and just add that to your project. You'll have a little folder called start content and that will give you uh, some free assets which will include the, the door and the frame with it. So let's just go back to the tutorial folder. So if we right click and create a blueprint and go for an actor here and we call this BP underscore door. Let me drag that guy in. And we right click again and make another blueprint. Make that an actor. And we call this BP underscore button. And drag this guy in here and we double click on the door open this guy up here and what we're going to need to do is go back to your content folder and into the start content and if we just type in or search for door we'll find these assets here so if we just start dragging these guys in um so we do the frame first like that and then the door put this onto the frame like that and if we put this one in too, just for, to make it look nice, like this, we compile this and open this guy up. And if we select your wall and rotate this around uh, 90 degrees, like that, and just move this into position like this, and then just grab your door and move this into position Like that, something like that. Cool, and compile this. Now I have a door, cool. So if we go back into the door, we're gonna have to get it to actually open now. Um, and the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna add um, a rotation to it to kind of swing open. Uh, so what we can do is if you go into the event graph and you select your SM door, drag this out give yourself some space and if we drag out and type in set rotation and you'll see set relative rotation just drag this out like this and if you right click and we type in timeline like this and we call this tl underscore open door and you double click on this, you'll get a kind of grey screen. If you go up to the top and create a float track, which is just a curve. So if you right click on the curve and add a key, and you right click somewhere else and add a key, and we make this one second, and you set this time to one, so it's at the end, and the value to one. This, and you can click these little icons here to kind of rejig it a wee bit so it's in view. You put this to zero, and if we just put a couple more points here um, and make this a value of one and a, this a value of zero, something like this, and you just select them all and you right click and put it to user, it'll give you a little bump. This will make the door swing a little bit at the end and just give it a bit better motion. Now if we come out and we realign this a little bit and we drag out from new track and you type in lerp rotator you chuck this guy into new rotation and you connect this guy up to update and at the top one that's okay but at the bottom one if we put the z to minus 90 and we come back along here and we right click and we type in custom event and we call this open door like that 
And a custom event is basically you can call this event at any time, almost from anywhere within this blueprint. Um, and we'll get onto casting later, but you can also cast to this event from a different blueprint. Um, so now if we drag out here and we type in flip flop like this, and a flip flop basically means it'll do A, then B, then A, then B. So it'll kind of flip flop between the two uh, channels. And what we can do is we can put A into play and B into reverse. And what this means is when we activate this event, it'll swing the door open. And then when we activate the event again, it'll close the door again. Cool. So now we need a way of actually triggering this. And if we just, if we browse to this asset, we can find our button. What we need to do is go into the button, open this guy up here. And we'll just create something really quick out of some cubes. So if you click on add component and you go down to cube like that, and we just squeeze this in, you know, make a sort of plinth type shape, uh, something like this maybe. Yeah. And then if we duplicate this by control W and we shift this guy up and just squeeze it in again just so it's like a little cube button type thing. Like, uh, like this, some, something like this. Cool. And just so we can actually see it properly, if you go to materials element zero, and we just chuck a different color in, I'm gonna go for basic asset one. Uh, you could do anything you like here. And if we can compile that, and then go to event graph, and we go down here, and we create another custom event, we call this button pressed, like that, cool. And uh, what we can actually do is, if we go back to our door and we copy this guy, the timeline, control C, and we go, come, come back to the button and control V, this will be an exact copy of the one in there. So we can actually use the data we've already used to kind of drive uh, other things. So if we grab cube one, which is our button, and we drag out from here and set relative location like this, and we drag out here, connect that up to update, just kind of neaten this up a wee bit. And if we drag out here and type in lerp, oh, lerp, and it's called lerp vector, and we chuck this guy into alpha. And what we need to do is figure out where we want this to go and where it is at the moment. So if we find out where it is at the moment, so it's 105, we'll just round that down a wee bit. All right, so we'll say 105 is the normal one. So we'll chuck that guy in there. And if you go back to your viewport, and we'll just figure this out. So if we lower this down to maybe here, maybe? So it's 92, so let's say 90. Nope, it's 95. Yeah, let's say 95. And we go back to our event graph. Let me chuck this guy in here. And we'll just uh, revert this back to 105. Nope. So now we've got it going from 105 to 95. And what we just need to do here is connect this up to start from play. And if we drag out of from finished, we can put a thing called a delay. Delay. And we'll set this to one. And if you connect this up to reverse, what this will do is when this finishes, when this guy finishes, it'll wait one second and then it'll reverse this entire operation so it goes back to the default state. Okay, cool. So now we just need to get a way to get the button here to be connected to the door. It needs to be able to communicate between the two. And the way we're gonna do this is if we go into our button blueprint and you go to variables and add a new variable and we call this target like that. And if you go up to the top right and under variable type, we change this to actor. Uh, actor here and just an actor reference. We compile this and you just tick on the little eye drop here 
compile that again. If we go back to our scene here and you click on your button, you'll have a little tab pop up. And what this allows us to do is pick an actor in the scene that will be able to be referenced inside your blueprint. So if you click the little eyedropper here and you click on the doorway, you now see BP door. If we go back in here and drag out your target, we drag out here and type in cast BP door, Ooh, like that. We now have a reference to that other object. So if we drag out here and we type in open door, that's the event that we created earlier in the door here to open. So the both of these are actually going to be able to communicate now. And all we need to do now is chuck it into this process. And the way we're going to do it here is if you right click and type in sequence or press S and left click and create a sequence. This will allow you to play this one and then this one. And it does it sequentially like all the way down so you can add more and more of these uh, pins. So if you put this guy into here, like that, and then you chuck then one into cast a door. What this basically means is we're going to push the button, which is here doing this visual pro process, and then we're going to tell the door to open. Cool. So the, both of them are actually communicating now, and that's great. However, how do we actually push this button? Well, the best way I've found to do it is to use your player character. In this case, this is the third person character uh, example project. So I can double click on this, but you can just use whatever character you like. So we'll just open this guy up. And we need a way of like knowing when the player presses a certain button. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but the best way to do it is if you go into your, your project settings and open this guy up. And we go down to inputs and you open these guys up. And in action mapping, if you click the little plus and drop this guy down. And for this example, I'm going to use the E key. Let me just find this E, there we go. And we'll call this action. Uh, action input. Cool. And if you just close this guy down, you go back to your third person or whatever character you're using. And if we right click and you type in action, action input, this is basically going to trigger whenever you press E or whatever, whatever button you've set up. Okay, if you go to event dispatcher here, click this and type in um, maybe action, something like that. You drag out and you call this and just chuck that guy into there. What this does is this is sort of like an internal messaging system for this blueprint. So if you've got anything going on like child blueprints or anything like that, you can tell them to do things with this sort of system. But what we can also use it for is you can bind this action to other events within other blueprints. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So if we leave this here, we compile, save, and we go to our button blueprint, like here. And right now we've got we've just got the plinth. But if we go and add a sphere collision like that. I mean, just uh, just bump this up, like maybe something like this, like that. And go back into your event graph and right click on the sphere and go to add event. And then under begin overlap here, just bump this down a wee bit so we can see things like that. Drag out from other actor and type in cast third person. And then we drag out here and we type in assign sign action like that what this has done is it's taken the dispatcher message that we've set up in our third person character what it does is binds this action to this event so whenever the action event in the third person is called this one will be called so if we drag it here type in pressed like button 
pressed. This will now lock our character in. So when we are in this sphere and you press E, it'll trigger this. And then in fold with that, it should open the door. Um, now, just for a little bit of housekeeping here, if you right click on the sphere again and go down to end overlap, just neaten that up a wee bit. And we drag out here again and cast to third person character and drag out and we type in unbind action like that and we just chuck this guy into here what this means is when the character leaves this sphere the e key will be unlocked essentially so it won't it won't be bound to this anymore and you know, you can kind of use the E key for other things in the game rather than it just being for this one single button. We save and we open this guy up so we can see in the world here. And we play. We go over to our button. And we press E. We can open the door. Cool. We press it again. It shuts the door. Sick. If I run away from the button here, like here, we press E doesn't open doesn't open if we go back and we press e sick cool oh and i wanted to let you guys know that i'm working on a game called button pop it's a mashup between tower defense and idle and a button masher game where you are the main button and you have to defend yourself against all the other little jealous buttons coming to get you if you're interested in the game or have any feedback or any ideas of cool buttons or hats that i could add to the game leave a comment down below and check out all my dev logs that i've got on my channel I really appreciate your guys' feedback, and yeah, with that said, let's get back to the tutorial. Now, there's a lot of pros and cons with this process. Um, the first pro is actually that it's really, really quick to set up. As, as you've seen, it's really, really easy and simple to get it to work. And it's actually really malleable. So if you, let's say you have another door here, you just duplicate these about. You then duplicate this about a wee bit like this and um, right now this is connected to this door so when you click this it will open this door and if you click this it will open this door but let's say you're going through your level and you want to click these in different sequences and you want to connect these up so this guy opens this one and this guy opens this one and we go into play and we go here we click the button it will only open this one and if we go up oops, go up to this one and we click E it'll only open that one and it'll only shut that one you know um, so that's pretty it's pretty powerful to do that in my experience as well this works quite well for smaller games so it's not too bad on the performance side of things uh, as long as your game is quite small uh, but on the con side of things casting nodes are actually really really heavy on memory um, so what I mean by this is whenever your game loads up a level it'll look for the assets that are in the level and then kind of load them up into a, a, a cache now if you right click and go to reference viewer like this it will show all the connected assets to this blueprint um, the door isn't too bad because it only is referenced in the button so it's just the assets really that are in it so if we close that one down we go to the button one and reference viewer you'll notice it's a wee bit bigger. Now, this is actually quite a big deal when your game gets a little bit bigger in scale. So the more assets you have, this is going to make a bigger difference to your load times. Um, so in here, these assets here are just the button itself. But as you can see, the button is also referencing the third person character and the door. And in most cases that will be fine, but the issue is, is that if I just have this button in this level, like I don't have any of these, I don't have the, the character or the door, I just have the button, I will still load in these assets. So again, if your game's quite small, that's not too big a deal because you're probably going to always see the character, so it's, it's fine. And if you're connecting this guy up specifically to this door, you're probably going to see the door. But if you have a plan for this to be used for multiple different assets and maybe you've got different blueprints for characters or something, this is a much bigger deal because regardless of what level you're using this in, you will always load these assets in with this asset. The last little cool trick I want to show off today is actually that you can 
make children from blueprints. So if I just jump this guy over here. So if we right click on our door blueprint and make a child blueprint class here, and drag this guy in here, just replace this one. And we're gonna get a message and this is because this is connected to this. That's okay. We just put this guy in the middle and we'll connect this guy up to this one. And remember, this is the child blueprint here. And the cool thing about child blueprints, I'll just close these guys down real quick, um, is that they inherit all the values from their parents. So if we go into the child blueprint and we see it, it looks exactly the same. And you're going to inherit all of these assets here and any variables that came with it, but you can change them. So we could change this wall to this type if you want. Now the cool thing about it is that we can actually use the dispatcher system as a way of triggering um, different events within the children. So if we go back to our parent blueprint, just the BP door, and we make a dispatcher here and we call it a door open event. Ooh. Like that. And we drag in here and we call this and we just uh, chuck this guy in the middle of this, like that. Cool. Save. And we go back to our child blueprint in here. We go to the event graph and go to your begin play section here. And we drag out sign open door event, like that. And just like in the button blueprint, we can bind these two events together. So what this means is when the door opens in the master blueprint or in the parent blueprint, it'll trigger this event. And what we can do is, is if we get the door uh, wall, for example, and we set material just for, just for showing off essentially. Let me duplicate that. And make a flip flop like that, exactly like before. Let me chuck A into that and B into that. And we just find out what default material here is. So if we click that little finder icon and we chuck that guy into B and we just like find a random color, like maybe green or something like that, like this. Compile, and you're gonna get an error and that's because we need to connect that guy up. <laughs> We compile, save, and we go back into our scene and we play. And let's say we go up to this guy and that will open that door, shut that door, cool. But then if we go over here and we open this one, it will turn green and then it'll go back to normal. And that's a really cool thing about child blueprints. They basically inherit a lot of the assets that you've made for the master one and you can make tiny little tweaks to the child ones. Um, it's specifically very powerful for like character blueprints. So if you've got like a master character with like health and damage and you know special abilities or something like that, and you want to share that across the world of all your characters, and maybe like each character has a, like a different um, max health or something, or like different damage outputs or something, child blueprints are really, really powerful for that. So yeah, I think that's the end of this video. Uh, in the next one, I'll be getting into interfaces and a bit more of the advanced communication of blueprints. Um, also, if you guys are interested in my current project button pop, I've got a number of devlogs up on the channel now and there's loads of cool stuff coming soon. I would just really appreciate your guys' feedback and see what you guys think. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys later. Bye.